The year is 826, and the once mighty Byzantine Empire is but a shell of its former glory. For centuries, it had been dealing with several existential crises, both internally and from beyond its borders. In the north, the Bulgarian Empire had threatened Constantinople itself on multiple occasions, while in the east, the eternal threat of the Abbasid Caliphate persisted. Along with these relatively new conflicts, the much older problems for the empire had not yet disappeared. Disgruntled generals who were supposed to be loyal to the emperor frequently attempted rebellions and military insurrections. Schism and heresy still were major problems for the Byzantines, with the iconoclast heresy being the current issue, causing internal unrest from the orthodox population. In this video, we will be covering the exploits of the traitor Euphemius and how his actions, combined with these aforementioned problems, mark the beginning of the end for imperial rule in the West. The Chronicle of Euphemius takes place in the heart of the Mediterranean, on the rustic island of Sicily. The island had been part of the Empire ever since its reconquest during the imperial renovation efforts of Justinian the Great. By the year 826, the theme of Sicily, which included what is now the region of Calabria, was administered by the newly appointed strategos Constantine Sudas. The strategos's primary focus was to send raiding parties by sea to Africa plundering coastal towns and taking as much loot as they could back home. The Aglubid dynasty, who were nominally under the control of the Abbasid Caliph, governed the raided lands. The man tasked with the conducting of these raids was a military leader with the rank of Tormarchus, named Euphemius. Euphemius had gained a reputation, as he had often targeted the Aglubid merchant vessels. However, Euphemius had gained the ire of Emperor Michael the Stammerer after he had received word that Euphemius was involved in a scandal with a nun. Due to this, Michael had come to the decision that Euphemius was not fit to hold his title, and demoted him. Euphemius, however, was able to catch wind of his demotion, and while on his way back to Sicily, revolted against Michael with the support of his fleet, who proclaimed him the emperor. The strategos, Constantine, upon hearing of Euphemius' revolt and the oncoming invasion of the island, escaped from Syracuse, which was then swiftly captured. Following these events, Constantine, who still had control over inland Sicily, returned that same year with a newly raised army to confront Euphemius. Though the specifics of this encounter is unknown to modern historians, Euphemius emerged victorious from the battle. Defeated, Constantine fled to the city of Catania in order to raise another army, but his attempt did not last long. Unknown to the Strategos, Euphemius's army had followed him to the city, leaving him no time to assemble a garrison for the defense. Catania was then captured by Euphemius's forces, this time not allowing Constantine to escape. After his capture, he was quickly executed on Euphemius's orders. Following his successes, Euphemius sent a commander by the name of Plato to take hold of the western part of the island. However, Plato was at heart loyal to the empire, and deserted his cause and rallied loyalist forces with help from Michael, the governor of Palermo. Plato and Michael then proceeded to set out for Syracuse and managed to defeat Euphemius just outside the city, subsequently returning Syracuse to Byzantine control. Euphemius, on the other hand, was nowhere to be found inside, as he took the opportunity to flee and evade capture. Euphemius, with a few of his trusted supporters, sailed to Africa, where he asked the Aglabid Emir, Ziadat Allah, for an army to help him reconquer Sicily. The Emir, accepted on the terms that Euphemius would have to pay an annual tribute in exchange for the help, and anointed Assad ibn al Furet, who was the biggest supporter of Euphemius's proposal to command the army. Soon after, in June of 827, Euphemius, with the Aglabid army, sailed to Sicily with around a hundred ships, and landed in Sicily. Initially, the invasion was successful, but problems quickly began to arise when a detachment of Muslim troops mistook Euphemius's men as loyalist forces. Despite Euphemius wanting to continue the campaign, these problems and the fact that Euphemius had very little control over the Muslim army led Assad to declare his intent to continue the campaign without Euphemius. Plato, now the governor of Sicily, marched against the Muslim army, but was soundly defeated, and retreated his army back to mainland Italy, where he soon died. Euphemius, still accompanying the Muslim army, started to regret his alliance with them. 
and accordingly started to secretly attempt to contact the imperial government to resist the Islamic invasion. By this point, the Muslim army had reached Syracuse and laid siege to the city after its inhabitants refused to pay tribute they had promised to give. The Syracusans had used the time before this to prepare the city's defenses, and as a result by themselves were able to withstand the siege until the spring of 828, when the Byzantine fleet had arrived to reinforce the defenders. Around the same time this had happened, a disease had broken out in the Muslim ranks, causing the commander Assad to fall ill and die. This caused the Muslims to panic and attempt to flee back to Africa, but were prevented by the aforementioned Byzantine fleet. The Muslims then fled to the castle of Minio, which they had captured in a short time. Following this, they split their army into two contingents, one which went west and captured Agrigento, and one which was accompanied by Euphemius that attacked Inna. The garrison of Inna went to Euphemius and said that they would acknowledge his authority if he promised to keep the Muslims away. Euphemius, seeing this as a golden opportunity, went to negotiate with them and met two brothers who were the designated emissaries of the garrison. However, tragedy struck for Euphemius as he was stabbed to death by the emissaries. Following Euphemius's death, the Aglabids continued to battle the Byzantines for Sicily, which eventually led to more than 200 years of Islamic rule in Sicily. Although there would be some attempts to retake the island in the future, all attempts failed, causing the end of imperial authority within Sicily. The fall of Sicily also gave way to the eventual collapse of all Byzantine territories within Italy, and were succeeded by the Normans, who became another thorn in the Byzantine side. We thank our patron, John Simiskis, for his continued support. If you would like to be featured at the end of our videos and gain other bonuses, be sure to check out our Patreon down below. We thank you for watching our videos, and if you like this video and want to see more content about the Byzantine Empire, be sure to subscribe and leave a like.